your ears are doing what they're supposed to. Well, this new student doesn't have eustachian tube awareness, and so they need to practice the, these techniques uh, at night, at home, when no other distractions are around, to get a better sense uh, that their ears are ready to, uh, to withstand pressurization. Um, I often, no, not often, I always tell my new divers to pressurize on the surface before they begin a descent. Before you begin your descent so that, so that you're, you're putting a pillow of air behind the, eustache, behind the uh, eardrum and that air pressure is supporting the eustachian tube as the water pressure uh, continues uh, to uh, try to deform the eardrum inward. The, uh, uh, the uh, uh, sport diving community will say, will tell new divers to pressurize early and often, but what does that really mean? I mean, how early and how often? Uh, Often means continuously in my book. You want to keep that pressure all the way on your ears until you've reached the bottom. How hard do you blow? In a diver who has already gotten 10 feet underwater and who's having an ear problem, the answer is don't blow at all. We, we don't want people to blow hard when they're underwater and their ears are, are blocked. If you get too deep, you're not going to be able to equalize. And, and if you blow hard, what happens is you get a, a big thrust of air come charging up, this, up, up the eustachian tube, and it snaps the uh, membrane, it snaps the tympanic membrane, and it snaps the, uh, the round window here in the cochlea. And that can lead to, uh, to trauma. That can lead to damage. It can lead to a ruptured eardrum. So we, we don't like people to pressurize when they're, when they're already blocked up. But when you're on the surface, you can pressurize vigorously. You can plug your nose and blow as hard as you want. And that will not cause trauma to your middle ears. Uh, we also don't want individuals to pressurize on, the, uh, on ascent. Again, that's a... That is a, a, a technique which can lead to pulmonary damage. And so uh, that's, uh, that's not a good uh, way to, to uh, uh, learn techniques. My um, caution is, uh, particularly, uh, is ex particularly extended to musicians because if a musician injures their ear, um, they uh, can lose valuable frequency response. And learning uh, uh, how to equalize should protect a musician from, uh, from inner ear damage. That's damage to the cochlea, to the hearing organ. Uh, if, a, if you do have a high frequency hearing loss like I do, well, it's harder to have that competitive edge. It's harder to, be, uh, to play in the symphony because you can't get the tones just right. So um, if you're on a vacation and, you're, and you've uh, just uh, flown to the Bahamas uh, and you injure your ears on the first, uh, the first day there, it takes two weeks for, those, for that trauma to resolve. So oftentimes we'll... Uh, uh, have people with uh, trauma to their ears who uh, lose a better part of a diving vacation. Muffling of hearing means that there's something wrong with, your, uh, with the middle ears and not something that you should uh, ignore. It could be blood and it could be fluid in the middle ear. So the take home message is that uh, divers have trouble with technique and not anatomy. Uh, for 99 percent of the time when, when I see a new diver in the office they uh, are just having trouble learning the technique which allows them to dive. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've, I've, uh, I've seen an individual 
who believes that they can't uh, scuba dive because they can't get the air to equalize in their ears. And, and it's just a matter of learning the proper technique. So my motto is, never give up. There's always a way, and I work with these individuals to help uh, get the pressure to equalize. It helps if you've got a highly motivated individual because that's what I'm going to ask them to do is practice, practice, practice. We do have treatable problems, and the treatable problems uh, can, um, uh, can be uh, a big uh, impediment to diving. If a person has allergies, that can make your ears quite stuffy, quite difficult to, to equalize. You can have trouble getting air in and out of, your, out of the sinuses as well. And so treatment of allergies is uh, important. The common cold, we'll talk about it in, in a minute. I don't recommend that individuals dive when they have a cold, and that's because it does cause more frequent barotrauma. Sinus infections, nasal polyps, these are all things that a physician can, can help uh, divers with. Deviations in the nasal septum can sometimes dry out the, the uh, uh, me mucous membranes in the back of the throat, and that can cause uh, additional problems. And of course, uh, pregnancy can result in some congestion. We don't recommend it that uh, pregnant women dive anyway, but often a pregnant woman will be a little stuffy from the extra fluid that she carries with her. And so, so there's a lot of reasons not to dive. Uh, if the, a pregnant woman has a greater risk for injury of the fetus, so that's the main reason we don't want uh, pregnant women to dive. But they get congested, and that's another problem too. Uh, so the common cold is, um, is sometimes deceiving because symptoms appear to be mild. But when you, uh, when you dive in and tweak your ears a little bit, you get a, a much more congested response. And so uh, well, what I see is that uh, uh, reverse block or ear trauma on ascent, people coming up, will have more problems than, uh, during, uh, during a cold. And uh, divers always want to know if it's OK to use decongestants. I think, again, that technique is more important than decongestants. And I would uh, always stress that if you know how to equalize, you're going to be able to do what you need to do without drugs. Uh, for the faintest amount of congestion, there isn't any problem with Sudafed. There's no problem with Afrin. But uh, I've seen some dive clubs around talking about the use of steroids and other more aggressive medications to help control uh, middle ear congestion. And, and I think you can go overboard when you're talking about uh, uh, treatment strategies. So in summary, I've talked about ear fear. And I think you know now that ear fear is just the trepidation that a person has when they uh, first learn a new technique and they discover some sensations of, in their body that they're not quite comfortable with. So ear fear is not a reason to, uh, to, to uh, cancel your dive classes, but it is something that I think we, uh, uh, we have to recognize because those people are at greater risk for injuring their ears. When you, uh, uh, when you lay down at night and you swallow at night when, you're, when all the lights are out, listen for that crackle and uh, pop in your ears because that's the sound of the levator muscles tugging on your eustachian tube and that's the membrane popping open a little bit. And, and you can hear that same sound at the end of a yawn. And, uh, and after a while, you can play with these muscles and learn to uh, manipulate your eustachian tube at will. Uh, we talked about watching the schnoz. That's my technique. And I want you to look in the mirror when you, uh, when you squeeze your nose and, use, and practice bobbing your Adam's apple, because that, um, that technique will help you to, um, to offer aid to other, other divers who are having trouble. 